Tech Nation's Career Ready Program <laughs> offers training resources, wage subsidies, and events to support post-secondary students who are interested in tech-based careers. We are proud to host the Startup Skills Series, which you have joined today, where we invite experts to discuss relevant topics in the tech and, and business world for students and aspiring entrepreneurs. We hope that you will join us for more startup series and the other events uh, we host throughout the year. You can keep up to date by signing up for our event newsletter, which I will link in the chat. The session will be recorded, just so you're aware. This will be an interactive session as well, so please turn on your cameras to participate with us. It is We really encourage that to get the most out of this um, meeting. Uh, now I will pass things over to our guest speaker, Shiraz, um, to introduce himself and start the session. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you, Paige. And uh, it, it, guys, I've been working with Paige for a very long time. She's always professional, but can we just do, can you guys do me a favor? Can we just give her, give it up for her glasses? Like those are epic frames. Thank you, Nathaniel. Thank you to everyone else who has their cameras on. That is awesome. Look, we're just going to hang out for an hour. And hopefully during that hour, we're going to be able to pick up on a couple of things and that we can apply to our businesses in the way that we conduct generating greater revenue. It's great to have ideas. It's how we turn those ideas into revenue generation that matters equally, right? You got to have a good product, but now how do you take your product to market? Now, our conversation today is all about uh, CTAs. Uh, and first question, uh, Nathaniel, I see your face right there. So here we go. Um, Nathaniel, what is, in your opinion, what is a C, what, what's a CTA? And I love your background, that's awesome. Uh, is that uh, like a um, call to action? Is that the right acronym? Perfect, perfect. Okay, now can you give us an example of what a CTA is? Um, you know what, to be honest, I don't think I would be able to. I'm sorry. That's perfect. Then, then, then I'm happy you're in the room, right? Like this is what it's all about. All of us helping each other moving forward. Now, is it Francis or Roderick? Cause you got a lot of names there, buddy. It's Roderick. Roderick, a pleasure to meet you, Roderick. Uh, uh, a, a, a CTA, what is it? Um, CTA, uh, like you said, uh, Call to action. Perfect, right? And and, and the whole idea here is, uh, I, again, I referenced in the description, you would have referenced this old proverb that simply says, you have not because you asked not. And there's a concept of like, you're hoping that people will buy your product or service just because it's really cool. And you got really nice colors and you, you throw AI in there and all of a sudden like, whoa, technology with AI, I got it. But no, 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 but we still have to ask them to purchase. Why? And there's a few reasons for that. And so if you guys are good, we're going to jump in. But before we we go on, it doesn't matter what we do today if it doesn't meet your expectations. It voluntarily, right? Would anybody like to share what you hope to get out of this session? And that's okay. Hopefully, over the next, uh, you know, 54 minutes, we'll be able to unpack that. Bear with me. So I'm just going to share share a quick deck for you. We're probably going to spend a lot of time here, and uh, let's see what happens. Can, can you guys see? Can you guys see a deck that at the bottom says "Sheep Show and Shape"? And my apologies, I can't see you guys anymore. We are trying to work through some te uh, tech technology challenges. So if I can just hear you guys, can, can someone just let me know that you're seeing the screen where it says "Sheep Show and Shape"? Yeah, it looks good to yeah. me. Leverage consulting. Awesome. Thank you guys. So here's a reality. Everybody would suggest that you be a leader and leadership skills are phenomenal. The problem is if we were all leaders, nobody's following. The reality is most people are followers, meaning most people want to be led. Most people want to be told, therefore, most people want to be sold. Now, will I endeavor to put a percentage on it? No, but just look at your company. Look at places that you've worked. Look at, look at our government. 
how it look like from a racial perspective, how many citizens are there to each elected official? How many CEOs are there to the number of employees in a company? Majority of people follow. That's not a negative statement. Again, if everyone was a leader, we'd all be headed in four billion directions, right? So that's not a negative, but it is a reality that helps us understand a few principles of what a call to action is. Again, fundamentally, most people are sheep. They like to be told, therefore, that's how they can be sold. The next thing, CTA. Uh, does anybody um, uh, uh, remember kindergarten? I'm a little older than I think some of you guys on the call, but that's okay. I'm comfortable with my age. Uh, does anybody, um, uh, and again, I can't, I can't see you, so you can just, you know, just speak up a little bit. Does anybody remember kindergarten grade one to grade two where we, we did show and tell? Yeah, my favorite time of the week. Thank you. And, and, and who was that that just shared? That's me, Nathaniel. Okay, Nathaniel. All right, your favorite time of the week. Awesome. Now, he, this is really interesting. Um, it was mine too, so I think we were going to get along just great. See, here's the thing. Um, you may follow the you, you may follow the CFL, the Toronto Argonauts. They're a football team. Uh, most people don't know what the CFL is, but it's okay. Hopefully, you do. They have a legendary. Uh, president right now. He was also their GM at one point. He was also a star running back at another point. He was also their quarterback at, or I'm sorry, their coach at another point. Now, this is what happens. Uh, the um, the uh, quarterback, his, his, his team, they threw the ball, right? And the quarterback throws the ball, and we all know this in football. Somebody throws the ball, and somebody catches it. All right. The quarterback throws it to the middle of the field. The receiver is running along the sideline. He's not even in the view. He's like 30 feet away from what happened. A clear breakdown. They disconnect. No completion. They didn't finish their objective. So uh, pinball, uh, Mike Clemens, the coach at the time, he goes over to, his, uh, to one of his other coaches and said, what happened? What happened? What happened here? His coach made a mistake. His, his, one of the coaches that he went to, he said, well, I told him what to do. And Pinball said he almost fired his coach on the spot. See, our job isn't to tell them. Our job is to show them. And if you can show people what to do, they are more likely to respond to your call to action. I'm going to build on that point. Show in a little bit. A third element here, shape, we're going to get into that as well. So, of course, uh, we, let, 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 let's get a little, uh, you know what, I'm sorry. We're going to come back to quantum direction in a minute. I'm not even sure what just happened to this. To this. Are you guys still seeing my screen here? Yep. Yeah, all good. My apologies. All right. So we're here to talk about call to action. Now, if is everybody in front of a laptop right now? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Or your phone, wherever you're at, can you open up another window? And I'm going to set up the distraction. Some of you are probably looking at your at your laptop right now anyways. You're probably online right now anyways, and that's okay. That's just the way that the world works now. Uh, I want you to look up a website called Designer. Okay. D-E-N, D-E-S, so design and then R-R. The word design, D-E-S-I-G-N, and then R-R. So if you can look up that website, please. And just everybody give me a quick shout when when uh, when you're there. I'm there. Are you, yeah, OK, good. Now I'm just going to watch you guys. and It's going to be really interesting. Scroll down. You're on design design RR. And when you scroll down. In the first view, do they ask you to buy something? Yeah, I got a pop up. <laughs> so as soon as you went there, you got a pop up. Fantastic. Yep. All right, Nathaniel, uh, scroll down. How much further down do you have to scroll before you get another ask, another button that says buy now, uh, book now, uh, 
a special deal? Well, there's one that kind of follows you the whole way. So <laughs> with a big timer what? on it. So. Yeah. Uh, OK, there's literally they're following you, making sure that you buy. Roderick, you're getting the point here, right? Like this is really interesting. Now you got a great product. Actually, Roderick, what is your product or service that you represent? Um, so uh, I'm I'm a data analyst, and I work for I work for the community. And my product is uh, more or less related to uh, uh, cleaning graffiti walls and uh, uh, like providing uh, water pressure system services uh, to anyone that uh, would need them. OK, so you sell to municipalities, water pressure, uh, or you work for the city? Yeah. OK. And Madison, what do you do? Sorry, you're on mute. I'm you're on mute. mute. <laughs> I work at Tech Nation. I'm Paige's colleague. So, yeah. <laughs> so we both are uh, program administrators. So we deal with our uh, student work placement program. So um, we talk to a lot of employers, a lot of small businesses who we love to work with. Um, so, yeah, it's great to hear the ins and outs of what goes into um their you know their day-to-day -day and how okay, they grow cool. and, and so because because your staff Matt, nathaniel i'm gonna have some fun with with madison are you ready i'm gonna have ready. some fun with her this is gonna be epic i'm gonna have some fun are you ready madison hey, yeah sure right. i'm ready <laughs> this is what i don't want you to do okay i do not i absolutely do not want you to, in this moment right now, picture a blue whale swimming in the ocean. Do not create a mental picture of a blue whale swimming in the ocean. Do not picture a blue whale swimming in the ocean. You're not allowed to see a blue whale swimming in the ocean. You're not allowed. Don't allow your mind to see a blue whale swimming in the ocean. You're not allowed. That was hard. <laughs> How many CTAs do you have in your representation of your product or service when you're pushing it out there? You see, I, I'm sure you guys got the point right there, right? Uh, Nathaniel, they were following Nathaniel around, right? Like they're like they're in his room, they're in his house now, right? Like like uh, are you kind of getting the point of how powerful a CTA is, but how you use a CTA really matters now? I'm going to go to uh, Nathaniel. Are you ready, Nathaniel? You look like the smart one in the group. Everybody's smart, but he just looks like he's like this next level of smart. So here we go. Are it's you ready, background. Nathaniel? That's the background. That's what it is. It's, it's the background. This is what. So I, I'm going to I'm going to ask you to to do something. OK, I want you to say uh, a word. Ten times and I want right. you to say it ten times fast as soon as and I mean as soon as you're done. 10 times like count like show me your fingers when you get to 10 right i'm going to ask you a question you have two seconds to answer that question okay you have yeah. two seconds to answer that question are are, are 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 you ready okay which which word am i saying okay for say the word spot 10 times fast okay spot 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 what do you do when you come to a green light? Um, go. Did he do it in two seconds or less? <laughs> I think that was more. It was more. <laughs> the whole idea is guaranteed, if you guys were following along, many of you said, and what did I subtly do? I dropped a little hint here. I dropped a little hint here. <laughs> Right. And, 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 and so there's these subtle asks that are training our mind. And what a CTA does is it literally begins to shape the buying process. Most people will not buy the first time, the second time or the third time. A CTA is married to your journey of touch points that says if I connect with you multiple times, 
and I begin to ask and I begin to ask and I begin to ask, eventually you'll land at a place where I need to make a decision. Now, the idea is the better the CTA, the more favorable the response. OK, now we said this was interactive uh, page. Can you tell me uh, the best? I mean, the very best CTA you have ever seen. Oh, um, I love a good 75% off. I can't, I can't deny it. Okay, right. And is that a CTA, a call to action? Well, the it call to the action was definitely purchase this item at 70% off. <laughs> and I couldn't say no. I'm a sucker for a sale too. I'm with you. They, they 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 call me the coupon king. Like I like I am literally with you, Paige. Like like I live for a good deal, right? Uh, I won't make any cultural references, but hey, yeah, like a good deal. I don't know about you all, but like hey, yeah. Don't worry if you have any complaints, uh, just send them to Paige. I'm not in. I'm I'm not appropriate. But here we go. Uh, the point is, what appeals to Paige matters. Is that in your CTA? The reality is, CTAs are not sexy. They're simply a constant presence that follows you. And every so often it says, buy now, book now. And there's these little buttons that you'll see. All right. So I would love for you, for you guys, I'm going to put it, put it in the, in the, uh, in the chat. And if you guys can go to this site now, I would rather give you guys live examples. Um, Vidi videos. I think this is it. But if you it, go ahead and Google that videos, it's in the chat and um, uh, see what you come up with. Maybe I didn't spell it right, but are, are you guys there? Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Google, for fixing that for us. Now, uh, again, same thing. Scroll down. Um, have you ran into a CD CTA yet? OK, now keep on scrolling down. This is interesting. If you keep on scrolling down, the CTA gets stronger. The offer gets better. Interesting. OK, uh, from what you're seeing, any thoughts so far, Nathaniel? I feel like it's so energetic, like every every time you scroll down, it's like a whole new ad. It's like it's just very multifaceted. Would you say that that is a good use and example of CTAs or a poor use or an overuse? What's your opinion and your opinion matters? My personal opinion is that it's a little bit too much. Like I would have liked short and short and sweet. OK, Roderick, do you have an opinion? Um. Yeah, I, I have to agree with Nathaniel. It is uh, it's a bit uh, too colorful for me. OK, so I think that's a great example of, in my opinion, and Nathaniel's, by the way, and Roderick's, by the way, that there is an it's possible to go too far with your asks. It almost feels a little bit of pressure. It almost feels like, hey, the light is shining so bright in my face right now. I'm gonna have to switch to something else. Does 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 that make sense to anybody? Does that re resonate with anybody? Okay, so here we're seeing a poor example or overuse. Now, can I put this in context? What's the price point of this product? It's hard to find it. OK, Ma OK, Roderick found it. Yeah, he said 67. Madison saying, hey, they've 
they're, they're like want me to buy, but they don't even tell me how much it is. Like, what's going on here, right? Like, it's buried. Okay, okay. What other observations are you making about this site? There's a lot of text, like a lot. It's a little bit too much for me, okay. <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> okay. This company is based out of England, and uh, uh, the last, uh, I think they've done more than 30 million in business over the past number of years. Hmm. That's now, good. Is I that think all of our opinions, all of our opinions were, wait, a little bit too much, a little bit too much. We all agreed. We all agreed, didn't we? Hmm. My, the last time I checked, and that was uh, maybe at least a year ago, they've done over 30 million in business. So, does it align with their, here's a first principle to take away, does it align with their business model? Yes, it's okay. Does it align with your business model? No, then do less. I'm not here to tell you how many to do. I'm saying that you should have more than one sitting at the bottom. You need to start right off at the top, have a soft ask, and then gradually get your voice stronger in asking for the sale. Unfortunately, many ideas will die and not make it to market or survive the first few years simply because the owner and the champion of the product or service is so buried in product development, but is not out there championing the cause of the value that they represent and asking people to buy. You cannot sell if you do not tell. And if you, do, if you don't ask, see, we live in a world where asking is better than telling people to, what to do. So a softer way to tell is simply ask. Are we kind of all on the same page before I continue? Yeah, again, the message isn't like loaded up with CTAs clearly, but what's your industry? Nathaniel, what product or service eventually, or, or, or is it right now that, that, that you want to promote and push? Um, it's like a, a 3D printing, uh, like carbon fiber kind of upgrade for small to mid-sized enterprises, 3D printers. Okay, so uh, who is your most likely buyer? Hobbyists and small, like I said, small to mid-sized enterprises. Okay, hobbyists, let's take them on, okay? Uh, your product, uh, if I were to put a price point, I'm looking at 15 to 3,000? Uh, no, the individual package would be closer to 300. Oh, where am I going? Okay, all right, so $300. So a hobbyist, you want to get a, a hobbyist to buy your package for $300. How many, if you were to have a web, a landing page for them to go to, uh, how many CTAs are you going to have on there? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> okay, so let's begin to develop some logic around that. CTAs are all about who your buyer is. They matter more than us being smart to, to, to land on a number, but who's your buyer? Like a hobbyist generally, so let's do a profile here. Um, Madison, can you share? And thank you for having your camera on. That's the only reason why I'm talking to you and because you're nice and you're smiling because that matters, right? And so Madison, can you describe one characteristic you think a hobbyist is like? Oh, characteristic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Someone who has a bit of free time, you know, to pursue their hobby. Okay. Um, or at least wants to make free time in their day to do that. So they're not someone who's like, I don't know. They're not someone who loves to be just busy working all the time. So especially if you're considered a hobbyist, I think you put a lot of time and effort into whatever your hobby or interest is. So that's, one. Thank you. Paige, another characteristic of a, a you got your camera on, so I'm talking to you. Um, a hobbyist, I would say, is um, someone who might be a self-starter, self-motivated, 
um, motivated by things outside of just start finish. I like the way you think. All right, Roderick. Uh, someone. Um, well, hobby, right? Uh, so I don't know, like close to a gamer, I guess. Okay. But yeah, but like in a general sense, uh, someone All right. who likes collecting so, Pokemon. So cards. so far, what we heard was they're focused and fixated. They have some free time. And Paige, you said. Self-starter, self-motivated. They're, they they self-initiate. Now, if we know that they are there because they probably already have or they want to upgrade or they're about to, chances are this isn't a product that you stumble upon and say, hmm, I might want to consider this. They're probably already interested. They're probably, and we're making some assumptions here, just high level, right? We just we just met Nathaniel, everybody together, right? And and we're making some assumptions that, you know, they're coming in 64% of the buying journey complete. Would that be fair? Nathaniel, from your experience? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay. If that's the case, does that help you to understand how many CTAs you have to have? Hmm. See, if we we're going to talk about CTAs next week as well, I was going to show you a grid and my apologies for not having it today. We'll we'll show you we'll show it to you guys next week. The strength of your CTA needs to start at level three, not level one. And if there's five levels, the strength of your CTA, if your buyer is already on the path of the buying journey, you need to start at level three, four, five. Just go for it. Go strong. Go hard. Mm. It's a very niche thing for a hobbyist to be looking for a 3D printer package, isn't it? So if they're looking, hit them hard. Nathaniel, mm -hmm. don't be like, oh, this would be really nice. They're past that. They already know what it is. Mm -hmm. Somebody doesn't accidentally come across a 3D printer package, do they? So my, my guidance to you is come strong with your language. And does that resonate and make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. OK, so if somebody was, I don't know, buying furniture, how strong is the ask now? A dining table with four chairs, count them one, two, three, four. How strong is the ask now? It's a different type of ask because that one, the brick alone will have uh, 487 dining sets and then they can go to Leon's and then they can go here, then they can go there. At that point, it's what Paige said is you want to push out your 75%. You got to get a hook, not a CTA. And again, next week we'll talk about the differences between hooks and CTAs, right? This is people who are buying. You need to get them trained to buy. Does that make sense to everybody so far? Thank you for nodding or lying like what, whatever it is you're doing. I appreciate it. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to continue on here. I'm going to share. Uh, uh, I'm going to go back to uh, sharing my deck here and uh, hopefully you guys can see this. You guys can see this, right? Yes, it looks great. Yep. Awesome. All right. CTA. Over these two, two, two Thursdays, this Thursday and next Thursday, we, we said we're going to come up with four CTAs. And everybody knows uh, CTA as call to action. OK, but this is really important to remember. You, an effective CTA clarifies the ask. CTA clarifies the ask. Do you know? So as a consumer, do I actually know what you're asking me to buy? And amb ambiguity will push me out of your shopping cart. So when you're writing your CTA, uh, um, I, 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 one of you made the comment of videos, oh, they have so much language, there's so much language. They're actually, confused of, they're actually confusing the ask. Minimal is not a bad thing. It's actually a very positive thing. Keep my mind clean and clear and clarify what you're asking and I'm more likely to buy. Does that make sense to everybody? Can't hear you, but that's okay. Hopefully it makes sense yeah, it to does. 
Thank you. Thank you, Nathaniel. Uh, we're going to send you a uh, Tim's card afterwards because you're just such a good sport. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, um, Thank you. So here we are. We're saying clarify the ask. Now, I, 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 I'm going to give you it, an example. And and so I, I'm sorry. I'm gonna. I'm just. I'd rather. I'd rather see your faces than look at this desk. This deck. So bear with me as I stop sharing. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Hello. Help me stop share. Are you kidding me? It won't even let me stop share. You might press escape. It didn't work. That's what I was pressing. But can you guys see me now? Like. Yep. I'm back yes, with we you, can right? See you. Uh, uh, on your team screen. Okay. For, forget the deck. It's not doing what I want it to do. That's okay. We'll figure it out for for uh, next week. Um, so I'm going to give you um, a CTA. Are you ready? If you buy the package, we'll throw in a free defibrillator. Weird. Okay. If you buy this bag of chips, we'll make sure that it doesn't expire before May. Okay, I'll give you another example. All right, you'll see where we're going with this. Well, you'll see where we're going with this. If you get this dining set, we'll throw in a fifth chair. I'm going to give you another one. If you do X, you'll get Y. Now, if you're using that type of model, is that a is that a CTA or a promo? If you do X, you will also get Y. Yes, I'm splitting hairs, guys. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm pushing you guys. It, it could ahead. be a promo. It's like it's like X and Y are two separate entities, and when you're pitching for one, uh, the other one can be uh, extra, so that would be considered a promo. Okay. You see, any time you make a statement that moves them towards the finish line of a sale, is a good CTA. Most people won't go from 0 to 100 or 50 to 100. Most people go on their buying journey. A great CTA will move people from 40 to 80, 80 to 90, and 90 to 100. That's a really fantastic CTA when you can progress people forward in their journey. Now, I'm going to go back to that same example. Is a good CTA a good CTA is not complicated. If you want to put conditions on my purchase, that's a promo. But everybody does promos. A good CTA is, well, let me let me put Madison on the spot. Uh, can you give us an example of a good CTA? Um, join our mailing list. <laughs> is that a CTA? Yeah, I see that a lot. Yeah, uh, subscribe now. Yeah, or that that's another one I see a lot. Yeah. Simple, right? Mm -hmm. It's clean. It's clear. Like, like there's no confusion. It's either clear or confused. Okay. One of the ways you know you're writing a great CTA is you're eliminating confusion in introducing clarity. That's a great way to write a CTA. And my apologies, my deck isn't working. Uh, just our ability to do a couple of things here, but that's okay. We'll just have this conversation. So hopefully, in more just like conversation, we can you know benefit from this as well. Uh, uh, I would encourage you guys minimize the amount of words you use in your CTA. You said join our mailing list now. Okay. Uh, What's the key word there? Join. Action. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm I'm always thinking of the action. So. Yeah, I would say join is, but also the key is to, you know, get 
more of an audience or more customers signed up. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Nathaniel, uh, she says join. What what do you think the key word in there is? In the in the word join. My apologies. The the phrase is <laughs> join our mailing list now. Yeah. To join now. Now. The power in a CTA is the immediacy of the action. You have a great CTA when you're saying the best time to act is probably uh, right now. You'll see that word now on majority of buttons. Buy now, subscribe now, join now. Mm -hmm. You'll see the word now. If I have a retail store and people, I got to wait for them to actually come into my store, right? Online, if they're coming to your site, to your landing page, we all know this. Our minds live on eight second cycles now. If we are not drawn in in the first eight seconds, they're going to go check out another site. Just how it works. We are, we live in a short cycle sensationalized world now. That's it. There's, uh, the concept of long cycle, the concept of having the opportunity to spend time and invest, unless you have a client meeting and you're going to see them or you have a Zoom call set up for 30 minutes, that cycle is shrunk to a matter of seconds. You're looking at eight seconds. Within that first eight seconds, can you get them to commit? Maybe not to a sale, but maybe it's a uh, Set appointment now. Call back now. Email now. Chat right now. Oh, there it is. The chat bot just pops up. But the word is now. And, and I just want to really take the time to emphasize and stress that the importance of uh, what that word represents now. That's the whole point of a CTA is get them to act. Now, I love what Madison said, so can we all throw out a verb? She said that the action words are really important, right? So I'm going to start and I'm going to steal Madison's verb. Sorry, Madison, I'm going to steal it. I'm taking it and and for everyone, you know, if you if, if your camera isn't on, but you want to uh, join in, uh, what's a great verb for a CTA? I'll say the word join. Paige, go for it. Um, apply. Now, anyone go for it, Nathaniel. I mean, sign up. Okay. Okay. Another verb. I'm waiting for the verb. We've got something in the chat from Emily. Check out. Okay. Thank you. Carlinda Emily. says bye. Thank you, Carlinda, Carlinda, Carlinda. She hung out with us a couple of weeks ago. Welcome back, Carlinda. Hey, uh, Carlinda, um, thank you. Winner, 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 winner. All of us dance, but only it took about five people to finally just ask for the sale. It literally took about five people to finally get enough nerve and courage to do what? Ask for the sale. And finally, Carlinda shows up and tells all of us, hey, little, little people, let's be big, big people and let's just go for it by now. See, the, it, it's a little bit more comfortable it, it, to, you know, dance a dance. And it, but at some point, so again, next Thursday, we're going to talk about the strength over this five strength levels of a CTA. You got to get to a point where you're by now. Purchase now. Are you guys kind of getting why? Because this is what I really need to register because if we don't understand the why, sometimes we're just do the what's, but we don't, we're doing the what well, but we don't know why we're doing it. Most people, again, let's go back to the very beginning, are like sheep. Most people are followers and that's not a negative thing. If the world was full of leaders, we'd be going in four billion directions. Most people appreciate good guidance. That's what effectively it is. Can you guide people well? 
Are you guys kind of with me? Okay. I'm going to, um, uh, any questions or thoughts uh, before we move on? I did have a question. Could you just um, clarify if we're speaking more about like business to consumer relationships or business to business? Great question. Does it matter what your C how your CTA is written like? And does it matter how many you have based on B2B or B2C? And I think we would all agree that it does matter. The price point matters as well. If someone is buying a um, a uh, 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 an eight thousand dollar printing machine, does it make sense to do buy now? It's not an impulse buy. So in a B two B setting, your impulse plays a role in the decision. So there is a big difference in how you write your CTA and the amount of CTAs depending on the value of your product. Like, hey, I got this Cadillac CTS, buy now. No, it's come visit us at the showroom now. In shorter words, of course, right? If you need help with that, call Madison. She, she's great with framing these things. Um, I'm just having fun, Madison. Uh, I, but you're getting the point, though, right? It's like that's a great question, Nathaniel. Now, let's use your product as an example. Is this something that is an impulse buy? Is it something that people have already done their research? Is it a B2B play? Yeah, it's a bit of a mix. Like for the hobbyists, they might have that like disposable uh, income where they just like they want to upgrade their their printer. For B two B, it'd probably be more like let's invest in this because this will give us good parts or whatever. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Right, and and, and so here are a few reasons to help with your question and your thought that can help. And hopefully, you guys are seeing my screen again. Yes, no. Yep. No, oh, yeah. No. It's looking okay, great. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Uh, I, I, again, I'm just flying a little bit blind here. So here, uh, why do you buy? And if you think about what you'd like, generally, that might be how other people buy, not universally. Just because you think this way would be horrible if everybody thought like me or thought like you, it's great to have plurality of perspectives, right? I think that's beautiful in your plurality and perspective. Not in truth, I think, you know, but but in, in perspective. Now, why do you buy? Here are four reasons why people buy. One reason is you'll buy from a place of need. Need it, I'll buy it. You buy from a place of want, right? A little bit more impulse. It's more heart dri driven. Need might be head driven. Okay. Convenience. Again, can you make the buying process easy for me with this one little button? Buy now. Click, enter in your contact information and your payment method, and it arrives at your door. Now, that, that's one of the last things we're going to do. We're going to check out Amazon, and we're going to see how effectively they use CTAs, right? But don't go there yet. Don't go there yet. The last one is really interesting. It's this phrase right here buy what you identify. And most people like their tribe, for example. That's just something that they want to be a part of. They want to be something that they already recognize. People will buy, sorry, go ahead, Paige. Thanks for catching that. We just have a question in the chat. Um, oh, okay. Yes. How will it work for a B2C product, but it's not a one-time purchase product, more of a monthly prescription, uh, a subscription, sorry. It's okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Shreya, for, for, for asking that question. How will it work for uh, B2C? Uh, again, what's your price point? It matters, because if your price point is like 100 bucks or less, Maybe you have a few more. If it's in the thousands, maybe you have a few less. 
I think what you probably want to do, and all of us really, and thank you for asking the question, is evaluate all the people that have bought from you already. See, there's this principle of, and most people will lean into what is doable. I would encourage everybody to look at, I make up words all the time, I would encourage everybody to look at what's doneable. What has been done already, re-engineer or reverse engineer it and figure out how your customers have bought from you. And if you can figure out that they called and bought on one, like a one call close, you know what you, to do. Go straight to level four or five CTAs and just bombard them like videos because your product is very impulse. It's quick. It's a it's a smaller uh, ticket item. People are going to buy quicker. I, I want to get to Nathaniel's point in, in, in just a second, but how will it work for a, a B2C when it's not a one time purchase product, but more of a monthly subscription? It doesn't change. A CTA won't change uh, because it's an ongoing because the purchase is one time. The delivery of your product is monthly, but the 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 commitment is one time. If your product, if they have to buy monthly, then you haven't set up your marketing well. If they're buying once and then it continues every month, let's say for a 12 month period. Yeah, it's exact same principles for a CTA that doesn't change, whether it's subscription based or one time. Again, make sure that your marketing suggests that you subscribe one time, right? And then, you know, continues in perpetuity unless they cancel and then give them, then charge them cancellation penalties. Get your money, Shreya, get your money. And uh, so I wanna, uh, Nathaniel has a point here. My guess is that what the free, that's what the free trial is for, okay. Now, is a free trial a promo or a CTA? Ooh, silence. I like I like you. I like silence. That's good. I like silence. Here, so let let, let me fill let me fill in a small blank here as far as um uh is it a promo or is it or is a CTA? In the beginning, I showed you some S's, you know, like shape and sheep. There's another S. Most people are skeptical. Inherently in the buying process, unfortunately, is a lack of trust. If they haven't run into your business product or service before. Why? Because at the end of the day, people buy from people or they buy from brands that they recognize. And so there is a level of skepticism that is baked into the buying journey. It's just natural. Think about the last few things. They're like, is this, eh, 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 eh? What are you trying to overcome? That the product is good or not? No, you probably know if the product is good or not, but is it going to work? Can I trust these people? Are they going to stand behind what they say? And those are only things that you can experience post purchase. So a free trial. Giving people a test drive. Are you kidding me? If your business model can allow you to give uh, your clients a test drive. It's fantastic. It is, it is absolutely brilliant if you can give your clients a test drive. And so, so Nathaniel, I'm not sure how that works in your world. All right. But I would say Shreya's model is powerful, a monthly subscription. And if you can tie a free into a free trial with a monthly subscription, you win. I, it, it, it is, it, it's not a license to print money, but it's the next closest thing. Because now you're saying, hey client, you tried it, it works, right? Okay, great. Every month we're gonna send you a package of ink for your printer. And you can offer the free trial to somebody who's do want to do a subscription. If somebody just wants to purchase, I would say don't give them a free trial. But if you can give somebody a free trial on a month on monthly recurring MRR is what is known as monthly recurring revenue and set up a client base like that, man, that's gold. That is gold. So I, just some, some small guidance for you. Again, free trial for everybody. Do a free trial, but marry it to a 
right? And okay, so now we got Emily saying, I'm in my third year as a freelance romantic dramedy screenwriter. First of all, Emily, I've never met someone who does what you do, and I'm just absolutely captivated. That is fantastic. And and she's saying, any tips for CTAs as I build my website? All right, so this is what's going to happen. All of us are going to work with Emily right now and give her some thoughts. Is, is that all right if everybody does that? Can we all participate in this? Thank you, Nathaniel, for all of you. Roderick, sir. All right. Yes, Madison, I'm volunteering telling you. You're going to get involved, too, and let's go. Let's go. All right. All right. Hi, Emily. And who is this young person you're holding? Oh, you guys are so sweet. This is Coda. He's five months old. And he's a love bug. <laughs> um, I think that you should just have him on your front page, and you're, you'll win all day. Like, like, right. <laughs> like, like, like that's it. So, so uh, here is a, 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 uh, a principle of test drive. Um, you say that you're a romantic dramedy screenwriter. Can you, the first thing that people should experience your work or service. And if you have examples, I, I would say from an enter, look, here's a reality. Here's a free freebie for everybody. Majority of people prefer to be entertained than educated. Mm. And if your <laughs> website is packed with information, but not infotainment, you're not going to captivate people. Mm. You win with edutainment. Edutainment wins. That's just, just, just we're, our, our whole, the, the world psyche from a buying perspective has changed since the interweb went online for the average person back in the 90s. And ever since then, here we are, right? So I, I, I would say, first of all, can you show me and not tell me? And thank you for a beautiful segue back to our very uh, original conversation about show and tell when we all did that in kindergarten. And it was powerful because I got to show you my thing, not tell you about my thing. So, so the first thing I would say to you is, can you, Emily, when somebody goes to your site, is can you show them your product or service? Meaning a, sam a sample of. Potentially, I could write a scene and then f get it filmed, and then that's what they could watch or something as they come on. I actually, I've been collecting people's websites for inspiration, and one website of a filmmaker, it wasn't a, a video, but it was like you like entered a forest, and it was like you're, it was a video, but it wasn't, and it was like you were just entered a world. I was like, ah, this is a storyteller, and they tell it through films, and that was really cool. So I was like, I need to do, I want to do something like this. And I just, just to add a little bit to my original, uh, to, to this, this question. Um, so I've been doing a lot of research in the film industry and getting to know people and doing all the things. And basically, um, once I find that some people that, that some producers and stuff that I want to work with, which are people who love romance, who specifically love, specifically love everything that happens before dating and, um, like how people actually get together and all that stuff and that are creative people and want to collaborate to make something beautiful um that i want them to know that like hey like that's what i'm about too like that we could gotcha. be a great team to work together and gotcha thank you i think you've painted a great picture for us we have a few minutes left so i want to give you the opportunity to receive some thoughts from a bunch of people that are on this call so the first thing is uh ex let them experience you right and let let them feel what your storytelling is all about when you entered that green forest. OK, great. Fantastic. Right. Um, anyone have any thoughts? She is a folks. I'm not sure if you'll ever read another freelance romantic dramedy screenwriter again. Right. So take it all in right now, everybody. This is Emily and Coda. Take it all in. So anybody have any thoughts for her? All right, and while everybody's percolating a little bit and thinking through it, uh, here is another ask that you're you that I, I would say that you, you might have. I don't think that somebody's going to buy from your website. I uh, just opinion. I think all the all it is is a living uh, uh, animated brochure. That's all it is. That's all it is. They're not going to buy. So CTAs have what place? So what is it that you're selling? And this is the last point that I'll make for everybody today. Think about what you're selling. She is not selling her services. She's selling an appointment. 
All you have to do is sell the next step. That's it. Your CTA should be married to the next step. Don't try to sell a screenwrite on your website. Sell your brand. So, I was gonna say uh, you like totally helped me right now because I was always like, "There's something missing. It doesn't make sense." It's like that's the key. Thank you. Say that again. Uh, then this way, technician has to pay me more. So like, just she's just like, "No, is that is, that's not how it works, Paige?" I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> we're good. But that that right there is the point, right? CTA is meant to sell the next step. So the question was asked earlier by Shreya. Um, you know, B to B does it differ than B to C? Well, uh, sell your next step, right? And if anyone else has some more, th I, I got a couple more points that I w wanted to uh, uh, position for you. Again, these are thoughts. These aren't, hey, do this, don't do that. This is more like, hey, here are some 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 kinder considerations. If you look at what you do, will your industry, uh, uh, have you thought about who would purchase your services or hire you to work on a project? Yes, yes, I haven't identified them, but like, for example, the uh, the writer of my Big Fat Greek Wedding, like maybe she would like to collaborate and do a fun thing together, for example. Okay, so are you push or pull here? Are you waiting them to come to you or are you going to them? I think I'm definitely going to be going to them, at least now. right now. Okay, good. So uh, I think we're going to land on this last thought from a CTA perspective. Is there a difference in your ask? when you're pushing or pulling, meaning you're pushing yourself to them or you've created this massive, you know, online digital presence where it's just pulling in huge amount of visitors to your site uh, or, or to your app, right? Like, like, uh, are you pushing to, does it make a difference in your CTA? I would think so. Maybe you can eliminate. It's all in the wording. And I think uh, next week when we get together, it does make a difference if it's a push or pull. Next week when we get together, we're gonna talk about the two remaining CTAs. We're gonna talk about the five strengths of what a CTA is. And we're gonna get everybody to write out some, like specifically to what you do, not general, but specifically to what you do. And we're gonna help you craft your own CTAs and help, to help you determine where to effectively place him. Look, folks, uh, we're right up at the e end of our time together. Thank you for hanging out. Really appreciate it. We're, we're right back at this at third, uh, at next Thursday at 4 p.m. as well. Tech Nation is doing some fabulous things. If you haven't visited there, well, obviously you have. That's how you found out about this, th this session here. But there's more to come as well. Paige, do you want to share that with them as well? Yeah, I, I just wanted to say, please join us again for the second part of today's event on March 9th. Um, and if you want any more information, you can email me at careerready at technationcanada.ca. Actually, myself or Madison will answer all of your questions. Um, and please do reach out. And thank you from me, everyone. Hopefully we see you next week at uh, 4 p.m. Nathaniel, Roderick, uh, <laughs> Shreya. Uh, Madison, Paige, Emily, thank you for your active participation. Folks, next week, don't be shy. Uh, you know, just make sure, just make sure you're dressed and turn your camera on and please come willing to participate. It's always a lot more engaging and fun. Thank you, everyone.